By now, most of you have probably seen that viral video of the church collapse up in New London, Connecticut. And of course, hopefully you've seen my analysis video where I gave possible root causes for what may have caused this steeple to collapse. But the question is, is how is it that there was an engineering report done before the collapse that says that the tower was structurally sound? How did this church go from having a clean bill of health like this to a complete, total, sudden collapse? Was there mistakes made by the structural engineers who did the analysis? So today we're going to look through their report and try to glean clues from this as to the collapse and also to see, did they miss something? Did the engineers get something wrong or was there some sort of latent issues that were not presently seen when they did this report? So here on the executive summary of the engineering report, Silver Petroleum Associates says here in their conclusion, although there are a high number of recommended repairs for both the church and the parish house, the buildings and shells are in good condition and with the exception of one observed leak, appeared to be watertight. So this is interesting. They're giving this entire building a complete good solid bill of health. Now the conclusion also says here is the greatest needs in addressing building safety are improving the emergency lighting, the fire alarm notification, and of course the ADA requirements here for people in wheelchairs and stuff like that. And just some abating and peeling of the paint in the church. So it doesn't seem that they found anything like a smoking gun or, or any types of major repairs that would cause them any type of great worry back in 2011 when they did this engineering report. Now the report goes on to show a couple of things around the property that I think could give us pause here. So for example, this figure one, the sidewalk heaving in the open joint below the hose bib. So this happens from multiple years of freeze and thaw cycle where the ground freezes and then thaws and causes movement. And so you can get these uneven sidewalks here. And then you would also get cracks over here too on the spider cracking at the base of the accessible ramp. But here they didn't really find anything that was, you know, overly worrisome and then here if you remember on the previous video i did here on this church collapse i had mentioned this because i saw this from the google maps view that you had these cracks here on the steps and i said sometimes these can allow water to come in as well so what they were saying here is this is what i've been telling people for years soft joints are preferable at these locations as they will provide more flexible and longer lasting protection so what the engineer is saying is wherever you have a change of plane like right here you don't want to fill it with mortar because look, that's what was done already and it didn't work. It didn't last. It just cracks. It's it's a very dumb idea. And I don't know why so many professional contractors come in and think that this is the way you repair stuff. I've showed you guys for years, whenever I tile in a, in a shower in the bathroom, in the corners, I, I never ever grout the corners ever. I leave them open and then when we're done, I always come in and I tool in 100% pure silicone whenever possible because you want a, you want to seal these cracks and connections up. Wherever you have a change of plane, you never want mortar there. You only want silicone or something flexible. And then they also pointed to more of the heaving here. These are the stone pavers at the South Plaza. This is right at those front steps where you come up. And then this is the entrance into the church. So you can see how uneven these are. And of course, these are more of a trip hazard than anything else. And they pointed out some spalling on the retaining wall in the corner. And they said that they should probably repoint some of the mortar joints as well. Now here in the report, they gave us a little bit of insight into what the church is constructed of. So it says right here, it consists of exterior load bearing granite walls on granite bedrock foundation and interior wood framed walls, floors and roofs. Now what we're looking at here, the steeple, it says the exterior tower wall originally constructed as a two wide cavity wall. Now this means that there was an inner set of blocks made and then probably in an outer set of blocks. So that was kind of typical construction, especially with brick walls back in the day. But it says here that it was grouted solid during the most recent renovations in the mid nineties. And, and certainly when you come back here and look at the Google street view that I showed you in my previous video on this church collapse, and actually this is ironic because that same crack on the steps that was pointed out in 2011 here. They never even repaired it. Nobody even went and grabbed a tube of silicone or anything to just seal that up. Just nothing was done there. As we look around the tower, you can see that looks like an area right there where they may have done some uh, repointing or grout injection. 
and probably along these change of plane corners here, maybe here as well, maybe along here. So they're pretty evident in the past of where things were done here. And you can tell that these were filled in as well. Hmm. So, you know, things can be misleading sometimes. How do we know when they did all of those mortar repointings there that they did a good enough job? How do we know that they filled it in all the way deep? Because, you know, you're supposed to do it almost like a ground injection. You need to shoot that stuff all the way in there and get that mortar solidly in between all of those blocks. Because remember, a lot of people don't think of this, but same thing when you're looking at a brick wall, those mortar joints are carrying the load down to ground also the blocks and then the mortar joint so the load goes right down through the blocks and if this is your mortar joint you better have a nice solid mortar joint here because if my mortar joint starts disappearing over time from water guess what happens you could get cracks right here in your blocks and so now here's the kicker folks so it says here these corrective actions appear effective as by all visible accounts and here it is the key right here the tower is structurally sound. So here you have a licensed engineering firm in 2011 telling us that there's nothing wrong with the steeple. It's not in any danger of coming down. So the question is, were they right or were they wrong? Or were they correct at the time, but maybe something happened since then? Maybe the ground sank a little, maybe it caused that steeple to lean. And like we showed you in the previous video, it appeared in videos that were taking months leading up to this collapse of the church, that this steeple seemed to be like just mm, leaning a little bit backward in that same direction that it fell in towards the sanctuary. And they said that the remaining granite walls were in great shape. And they said they only found this one stress fracture right here. And they said that this could easily be fixed by just repointing the mortar. So they said this was more of a cosmetic thing than anything else. This was on the northeastern part of the church. So then they showed here in the sanctuary floor leading to one of the doors here where they had uh, several layers of wood subflooring and they had cut a hole in it in order to get through to the bottom there and get some pipes going. When they sealed it up with new plywood, they failed to screw the plywood down to the joists below it. So they just said that this needs to be screwed down, not glued in case you need to pull it back up at some time in the future. So this right here is some water damaged wood flooring that they found uh, outside of the Narthex main tower. And so when you look at it here, it, it it's pretty hard to kind of see everything that was going on. But yeah, you could see right here where there's chunks of the wood missing and, and more chunks over here. A lot of this pretty much needs to be replaced at the time of this report. And they said right here that through observations and historical notes, it is apparent that this area of the Narthex suffered severe prolonged water damage likely due to leaking roofs at the tower balconies. Some portions of roof framing beneath the leaking balconies have been replaced, but the damaged flooring and the framing still remain. What the report is saying is that they likely had some kind of leaks up on the roof at some point in the way in the past, maybe on both sides, and those leaks found their way down and caused some issues on the flooring inside these doors. Now, the report also said here, talking about the steeple, says the main tower and steeple consists of a series of wood framed levels connected by wood framed stairs and platforms. The framing appears to have been recently replaced and is in usable condition. But they pointed out here that these granite steps leading into the main tower from the balcony were broken. And look at this, this kind of makes me nervous. So I'll tell you where we're looking at here. We're probably on the right side of the tower looking west, and I'll show you here. They're probably standing right here looking this way to a door that's there. Now I've tried looking at it at different views from the Google Street Maps, and even standing on the side, the view is obstructed so you really can't see. But we do have a pretty reasonable satellite view here looking down on the church. And you can see there's a, we assume that there is a door on either side of the steeple here accessible from the balcony. So you have to so almost climb up into this door. And that's what they're showing here. When you close this door, this bottom step here is exposed. And you can see they've already had a previous repair on here, but all of the other steps are protected from the weather. But this bottom step here is still exposed to any kind of rain and snow. But this makes me uneasy seeing this. Now, 
I can understand where you might have some settling and stuff, but it, what you have here is you have the blocks are doing this. They're kind of going, instead of being straight like this, they're kind of going like this, which makes me wonder, does this mean that the tower is in the early stages of something's going wrong and they're, they're wanting to separate? So I don't know if the engineers missed anything here or if I'm just adding too much conspiracy theory into this of what I think is probably going on there at this time. So the engineering report also goes on to show us what's going on inside the two Narthex alcoves. And so I'll show you where we're looking at here on the outside of the building. See these alcoves here are on this door and then on the other side of this door as well. You can see the exterior shape of these alcoves. So inside the Eastern one, you can see it, the report mentions that uh, the alcove contains plaster that has been damaged from previous roof leaks. You can see it's bubbled here, it's crumbling and it's stained. And then over in the western side, you can see that they had already scraped off the plaster and the paint because of these previous leaks. So it looks like the leaks that they've had here in this church in the past were all kind of around in this area here on around the balconies, balconies on both sides here. So apparently something wasn't sealed up very good and they got a number of leaks and also some of the leaks could have come from you know cracks if there was any cracks in the joints the mortar joints so i don't see any active cracks but you know a lot of people that saw our previous video were pointing all over the place here saying oh there was a crack here some people said hey look up over here there's cracks here but i don't know if these are the general shape of the granite itself they don't certainly look to me like any active cracks, which is what I was looking for. Something that is currently open and being a problem. So that's what we couldn't quite see here. Now on the exterior of the church, they really didn't find a whole lot. Um, so one of the arches here, they, they showed it just needed some uh, open masonry joint that needs to be repointed. And some of the windows, they found a little bit of rotting wood and some sealant that needs to be added. The masonry chimney seemed to be, you know, they said the masonry chimney was in poor condition because you can see all of the fractures that are everywhere. Now this was on the west side of, of the steeple. See, this is where the chimney is. So they were showing it way down at the very bottom over here. In terms of the slate roof, they just said that there was, there was a few pieces that were missing and then there was some sagging right here at the framing of the chancel roof. So this is at the back of the church, so it's nowhere near where the steeple is. So the engineering report also shows things like the parish hall, the boiler rooms, the radiators and the air conditioning system and the, the electrical wiring and stuff is, of course we know everything is out of code. The fire alarm system needs to be updated. These are the typical things you find in engineering reports like this. So now when we look at what their recommendations were, you can see how everything starts to add up really quickly. And this is a big problem for churches. It was a problem in our church. I mean, we were no different too, is that over the years, you don't have the money to make these massive repairs. So you make little patches here and there and there. And sometimes repairs are done by handymen that may not know everything in the world about protecting the building against the, you know, the ingress of water and stuff like that. And water leaks, that's always the biggest one. And so you make all these patches over the years, and when it finally catches up to you, you, you don't even have the money to make the big repair when it happens. So here, let's take a look at some of these uh, priority one recommendations that they had for them back in 2011. And you can see just how expensive it is, look, to remove and replace the church ramp and handrail and all that, just to be ADA compliant hundred grand and it's always been a ripoff for buildings anywhere to have to start to bring things into compliance for ada because there's so much expensive work to be done look at this you got to test the paint for lead you got to conduct a full roof inspection five grand replace the damage and missing shingles to prevent water infiltration another 15 grand there remove and replace shingles fasteners underlayment at the chancel roof 15 grand so roofing is very, very expensive and, and very prohibitive for many churches to even take that on. You get more boiler room, combustion air. You have to upgrade all your air ducts and everything like that. The new fire alarm systems, you have to upgrade that to code. So they're already at 168 grand just from the priority one stuff. And then it starts coming down in here and looking at, at more and you're seeing, look at this 20 grand again, just for that platform lift at the stairs. So things just start very rapidly adding up. You gotta replace all the doorknobs to make them ADA compatible. 
and fix damage here. Here, look at this, just to, to repoint the masonry on the chimney, 2,500 bucks. 15 grand for sanding and painting and other things. So again, by the time they're all done with all of these things that they've recommended that have to be done, at the end, you're at about $700,000 total. And we all know that once you start doing work on something, you're going to find more. You open up a wall, you're going to find a whole bunch of damage that needs to be repaired. So you can expect that seven hundred grand to go shooting even much higher north. And remember, this was in 2011. So the prices would be much higher the more you delay it on. So if you recall back here in, in the South Florida, the Champlain Towers condo collapse that we covered in Miami back in 2021. And back in 2018, they were presented with an engineering report. And I believe in that report, they came up with something like $8 million in damage that needed to be repaired. And they delayed on it. And by the time they finally got around to implementing it, the price had ballooned up to almost $16 million. And they also provided this floor plan. So now we get to kind of see the whole design of the church. And here's probably why that one employee survived. So there was one lady in the church who survived the collapse because she was back here in the office, which is back in the parish hall, which it's, it's not even really part of the main building. It's a separate set of buildings that were built in the 1970s. But it, so here's the main entry. Here's the steps, the double doors and so our steeple is right here and then once you get up onto the second level is when you would go and then once you get up onto the second level like on the balcony and then when they would go from here outside and then across the the little flat roof there to get into the steeple tower into those steps yeah, so zooming in a little more there's there's the east tower there's the west tower and the steeple was right here and so during the collapse, the steeple fell backwards slightly and then disintegrated. And then everything pretty much fell into this area right here. And then the rest of this whole front wall of the church and everything crumbled and fell down the hill and down the steps towards the front gate. So what did the engineers get wrong here on the report? Well, maybe the report was right. Maybe at the time that they investigated this and inspected the church, there was nothing wrong with it. But on our last video, we did receive a lot of comments from people who live in the area talking about the weather and how much rain they had recently. So this comment says, hey, I live in the next town over for weeks before the weather was very bad. It was freezing and then warm and then freezing again. Constant rain that would turn to snow. That and people's basements were flooding almost every day. The soil was very saturated. So they're right, maybe that played a role as well. Maybe that caused the steeple to start sinking a little bit and it started to lean. And then this comment from Mika Boxer one says, I live not too far away. We have had excessive rain, which is the enemy of stability. And then another New London, Connecticut local, Everett Degrassi says, I wonder if all the rain we have had in recent weeks caused the soil under the steps to slip a little under all that weight. And away we go. And don't be surprised if you start seeing more churches that are having this problem. So here's the Miracle Temple just a few blocks away from it. And as we uh, examine this one, it's got some problems like missing mortar and stuff like that. And these vertical cracks, like, let's see that. You're going to see a lot of missing mortar in some of these joints. Who knows how long before this church starts to have troubles too. You can see it going all the way up here and then going up at their steeple. You can see the big, huge chunks missing. How much longer before this one comes crashing down? So there's a lot of churches from that era that were built 175 years ago that we might be seeing coming down before too long. 